Welcome back to MSNBC's special post-Democratic debate coverage. I'm Joy Reid. And in this first debate, since the House impeachment inquiry began, there was one thing all of the Democratic candidates agreed upon, for the most part, impeachment. All 12 candidates on stage expressed support for at least the inquiry, with several saying that they're ready to vote to remove Donald Trump from office right now. This is about Donald Trump, but understand, it's about the next president and the next president and the next president and the future of this country. He will not cooperate in any way at all, will not list any witnesses, will not provide any information, will not do anything to cooperate with the impeachment. They have no choice but to move. I think that the House will find him uh, guilty of, worthy of impeachment because of the emoluments clause. Because as a former prosecutor, I know a confession when I see it. And, and he did it in plain sight. We must be fair. We, we are talking about ongoing proceedings to remove a sitting president for office. This has got to be about patriotism and not partisanship. We have a constitutional duty to pursue this impeachment. We have to impeach this president. And the majority of Americans not only support impeachment, they support removal. Well, it's a mistake on the part of Republicans who enable a president whose actions are as offensive to their own supposed values as they are to the values that we all share. I think that it should continue to play its course out, to gather all the information, provide that to the American people, uh, recognizing that that is the only way forward. And we have a responsibility to be fearless in the face of this president's criminality and his lawlessness. So, in fact, Impeaching and removing this president is something that the American people are demanding. We need to present a new vision, and that even includes talking about impeaching Donald Trump. Joining me now, Tiffany Cross, co-founder and managing editor of The Beat DC. Jason Johnson, politics editor at TheRoot.com and MSNBC political contributor. Jonathan Alter, Daily Beast columnist and MSNBC political analyst. Joel Payne, Democratic strategist and former director of paid media for Hillary for America. Okay, uh, Tiffany, I'll start with you. Uh, everyone pretty much agreed on this. There were some nuances there about how far they thought that people should go. Was it, was it even possible for anybody to stand out on this issue? No, and I actually think this was a bad way to start the debate. You know, I think you have to get the American people, while you have them, you have so many competing interests. Yeah. And this isn't really something that the American people, I think, were focused on. I thought a lot of the questions off the top um, were really a lot of things that the chatter class and, like, us around this table are sitting around talking about, not necessarily what people, um, you know, are talking about in barbershops and right. on corners and in their yeah. homes or whatever. Um, I think a better question may have been, what's your argument to the person who says, look, let's just let the election happen? You know, that would have been, I think, a way where you could see some more daylight between the candidates. Yeah. Um, but I will say, I thought that Mayor Pete um, actually gave a great response. I thought his response was one of the um, best responses when he said, um, shame on the Republicans for yeah. not standing with us. And you're, you're seeing a lot of this kind of same uh, rhetoric at a lot of these town halls across the country with, you know, members of Congress going home and having their Democratic constituents say, yep. I think, you know, impeachment is, is going far. Um, I think you have to learn how to clap back at those people, even though they're your constituents, have to make this argument. And I thought it was kind of a missed opportunity for the moderators to present it in a way to the, the, the contenders for them to make this case to the American people. Yeah. Let, let's play. This is Buttigieg. This is 24 seconds. This is uh, a cut six. This is him making not the specific argument that we just heard from Tiffany, but kind of his argument for impeachment. Look, the president has left the Congress with no choice. And this is not just about holding the president accountable for not just the things emerging in these investigations, but actions that he has confessed to on television. It's also about the presidency itself, because a president 10 years or 100 years from now will look back at this moment and draw the conclusion either that no one is above the law or that a president can get away with anything. And that was good. Let, let, let's play uh, Cory Booker also. This is cut four. This is uh, Cory Booker. Uh, listen to that. We have to conduct this process in a way that is honorable. I swore an oath to do my job as a senator, to do my duty. This president has violated his. I will do mine. So, Jason, that was an answer to a question that I thought was one of the oddest questions tonight, was do you think you can be fair to Donald Trump. That was a weird framing that was sort of 
put to several of them. Do you think that you can treat the man fair? Uh, first off, the man doesn't treat anybody fair. So <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing is kind of crazy and ridiculous. But, but this is what happens when you ask a bunch of people there's not a lot of daylight between them right. to answer the same question. Because by the third person, they're all saying the same thing. If you wanted to start with something interesting, because Pete gave a good answer, like Tiffany said, and Corey gave a nice answer, and Joe gave a good answer, and Biden gave a good answer, you, you should have actually started with Tulsi Gabbard. Because she was the only person on the stage right. who initially was against impeachment and That's then right. changed her mind and claimed that it was going to divide the country. Ask people on the areas where they may actually have some difference. Because even if you say the sort of argument, can you be fair one way or another, Senator Harris and at one point Biden, initially they were saying, like, look, since we would be on the jury as right. senators, we're not going to give a direct answer, but now the evidence is so clear. So I think that was sort of a weakness on the part of the moderators, but yeah. it's also what happens when you have 12 zillion people competing, yeah. all answering the same question. Yeah, let, let me play Elizabeth Warren, because she was actually the first to come out of the gate uh, and, and be in favor uh, of an impeachment inquiry. Let's play what she had to say and how she explained uh, why she's for it. We took a constitutional oath, and that is that no one is above the law, and that includes the President of the United States. Impeachment is the way that we establish that this man will not be permitted to break the law over and over without consequences. This is about Donald Trump, but understand, it's about the next president and the next president and the next president and the future of this country. The Sir. impeachment must go forward. John, I feel, you know, Elizabeth Warren's just good at explaining things. Okay, let's just, let's just right. stipulate to that. And I think she gave what was probably the most coherent, clear answer for someone who doesn't understand why, why this is being done. Well, that's one of her great skills and why she's the front runner. She, she's the best communicator, and usually the best communicator wins. Uh, but, you know, she actually went, she got steam when she came out for impeachment. That was a very yep. big moment for her campaign. She was early. She was actually not the first one. The first one was Tom Steyer, and he's the one I have a bone to pick with, okay? Yeah. The guy has spent $47 million buying himself onto that stage. That could fund more than a 1,000 campaigns for state representative yep. in this country. And do you know that today there was an article in the New York Times about what's going on in Ohio, where more than 300,000 people Voters have been purged yeah. right, right. from, the, and there's one guy, it says he's getting donations from his relatives. He has no money, and he's just sitting there with his computer trying to save hundreds of thousands of votes, most of them for Democrats. Where is the help from the DNC, from the Tom Steyers on the world, of the world? They're not focused on job one, which yeah. is fighting voter suppression. Absolutely. And for this guy to be running for president, instead of being out there getting the Senate back, fighting voter suppression. It's yeah. really disappointing. And by the way, he, he announced, uh, he, he came out with that need to impeach before he was running for president. A lot of people said, this is because you want to run for president. And at the time, he was like, no, it's not. But it turned out, yes, it but was. But it's Let's... okay that he did it, because he built support for sure. it. He's been good on the environment. He just needs to get off the ego trip, go yeah. back to what he was doing before. L let me play Joe Biden, because this, in a lot of ways, impeachment has kind of swirled around him and his family situation uh, and the, the attack on him by this outside group, the three amigos, they call themselves, and all of the outside yeah. entities running around Donald Trump. I'm going to give this one to, uh, for Joel Payne here. Uh, here's Joe Biden. This president, and I agree with Bernie, Senator Sanders, is the most corrupt president in modern history, and I think all of our history. And the fact is that this president of the United States has gone so far as to say, since this latest event, that, in fact, he will not cooperate in any way at all will not list any witnesses, will not provide any information, will not do anything to cooperate with the impeachment. They have no choice but to move. You know, Joel, it, it, I don't know if you have a sense of kind of flashback that he is in the position in a lot of ways that Hillary Clinton, your candidate in 2016, was. How do you think he's navigating that position as differently, uh, or is he navigating it differently than uh, Secretary Clinton did? I don't think he's navigating it that differently at all. And I think that's what's giving a lot of heartache to a lot of establishment Democrats who feel like they're seeing a replay of three and a half years ago. Um, and that is with all due respect to my former boss, uh, the former Secretary of State. Um, Donald Trump can run the same campaign against Joe Biden that he ran against Hillary Clinton. He can literally take the playbook from 2016, dust it off, replace uh, you know, emails and Clinton Foundation with Ukraine and Hunter Biden, you know, insert 
you know, all, you know, uh, control, delete, and just run the exact same campaign. Great. And I think that's what's got a lot of Democrats concerned. That's not to say that Joe Biden can't beat Donald Trump, but it's a easy, comfortable campaign for Donald Trump to run. Yeah. And I think what you're what you're seeing is a difficulty in Joe Biden getting out of the the shadow of of, of his past, and in a similar way to how Hillary Clinton struggled as well. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a good point to bring up. Yeah. Well, uh, we, oh, if, if you'll I, remember, I don't, I don't okay, we're gonna let everybody. Oh, everybody got thoughts. Everybody got thoughts. We're gonna let y'all give you thoughts <laughs> on the other side of the break. Up next, age is just a number. Unless you're running for president. Now, Biden, Warden, and Sanders answered questions about their seniority and their health. Now to the issue of candidates.